testing somewhere. Yes, dearly beloved, that is right. We are gathered here today to remember a fallen friend and an artist who inspired and touched all of us. Uh oh. Gathered here today. Now we're doing a little bit of echo action, but that's fine. It might be a ghost. It might be the ghost. Uh, we are, of course, here for the funeral of Philip Trom, Benjamin Stewart Steele, Rusty Cage, uh, our dear friend. I am Simeon Jimmy, joined today by Aggie Eggman Rodriguez. I'm not the captain anymore, my friends, but but there's a man. He's guiding my soul right now from the beyond. His name is Philip Wong, otherwise known to you Americans, Rusty Cage. And the man who will one day direct the Rusty Cage biopic, Kino Corner. I'm already talking to Brittany about getting his life rights. That's good. Uh, and everybody in the chat, of course, is here to mourn this dear man who touched everybody. Millions of people, really. Uh, Jayu wants to know, can we say Rusty with a hard R? Do either of you have permission to like give that pass out to people? Well, you know, <clears throat> speaking of a hard R and something to do with a race, Buffalo Tea Race was Rusty's favorite drink. Mm -hmm. I don't have any now. But something else that's kind of fitting that I have left over from a previous broadcast and I didn't plan for it all, I have a nice zombie ice, 8.5% alcohol um, from Three Floyds Brewing Company. This one's dedicated to a real one, Philip Wong, a.k.a. Rusty Cage. A.k.a. Benjamin Steele. And everybody out there, if you have an alcoholic beverage with you, please drink now along with Aggie. Uh, you know, I'm off. And with me. I'm on and or off the it. wagon, whichever the good one is, with my coffee, but... As an alcoholic, Rusty would want all of you to drink. I'm drinking this uh, soju. Hello. And we're, you know, because we're joined Rusty by the downward weird. spiral himself, the Emp Lemon. That's right, everyone. Are, are, are we live here? Uh, we're live, and we're okay, about yeah. to begin some Rusty Cage eulogies. Okay. Okay, I, I understand. How you feeling, Emp? Because I know that you were closest with Rusty. This must be tearing you up inside. Well, to be honest, it's it's kind of been business as usual, you know. I guess it is a bit strange seeing Rusty's name popping up on social media for um, reasons that are not related to school shootings. However, I will say that Rusty's whereabouts right now may not be certain. And, uh... I hope he can come back and maybe at least make one more knife game song. No, cause... I mean, Amp, I don't know if you understand what's going on. Rusty, he, he's not with us anymore. He's passed away. He's, I believe he's six feet under. The funeral with his family was yesterday, and we're doing this kind of as like a friend's online funeral. That's, that's weird. I, I wasn't invited to the funeral. Well, I, I yeah, think it was either. only like close friends and family. Uh, maybe. Like you were more of like a like a collaborator. Like you and him did like those Shark Tank videos, but then he didn't even like post them. He didn't really care. Yeah, you know, honestly, leading up to uh, I guess the end here, Rusty's behavior had gotten a lot more erratic. Not following through on YouTube videos that we're planning for months and months. You know, it gets kind of annoying after a while. But you, you know, it, it, I guess it is tragic to see where it ultimately ended up. The question is, is who here is going to uh, finish Requiem of the Crazy series? You know, <laughs> after Frank Herbert died, his son stepped in and wrote 20 more Dune books. Who's well, last time I tried to write a comic Herbert? book, I got into some trouble. So if somebody else wants to volunteer. Well, I'd hate to be that guy, but I did draw a lot of stick figures fighting each other with katanas when I was like 14 years old. And That's basically Requiem of the Crazies. I'm also crazy, <laughs> and I look and smell like a homeless person, so I think really my lived experience is probably really close and spot on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hire AI with a monthly subscription to just steal the art style of Requiem of the Crazies, and then I'm going to... I'm going to go on a diatribe into my microphone and I'm going to get it all 
caption recorded through technology. I'm going to feed that into chat GPT to lay a framework. And, you know, AI, they're taking all the jobs, so I might as well just go with the flow. Requiem of the Crazies, officially licensed part four. Definitely by 2030, for sure. That's probably how long the fans would have to wait if Rusty was still alive. So it'll be like nothing ever happened. Uh, Emp, is there any word on who will take over the Money Suckle YouTube channel? Honestly, all the assets from that channel have long since been seized by <laughs> offshore pirates. So it, it's, uh, its fate was definitely uncertain before Rusty's demise. And now... I don't know, maybe it's have, more of a spiritual set-off that Money Suckle can finally be put to rest for good. I remember, I remember the beginning of Money Suckle. We were all at Rusty's house, and Emp said, Hey, guys, can you come into this room with me and film this video? And we asked him, what's this video about? And Emp said, I don't know. Let's just film something. And then 20 minutes later, we had a really terrible video that Emp could use. Did yeah, that's it? right. I don't know. I never watched them. I think it. Is, I think it is on the channel still. Yeah. But once again, another uh, another project with great potential that could have gone on to the stars, but instead, Rusty had to do another edition of his comic that took eight months. Well, I, even I more want to talk about away. some positive aspects of Rusty's character because I think. He he was the perfect type of egomaniac for the common man. I, I feel like Rusty, he could only associate with people he considered to be lesser than himself, which normally would be an issue, but it's good for guys like us who are so far beneath him that he it made him feel good to invite like us poor people over to his house so he could show off all his cool shit. And, but he would buy Guns. us food and put us on his YouTube mm -hmm. channel, you know. Like, he's a very generous egomaniac. You know, he, he insisted on buying me a meal a lot of the time, but then he'd later go on to complain that I'm penny-pitching Freeloader. <laughs> oh, so, <wow. laughs> I don't know. He definitely did enjoy buying people food, but whatever reason that may have been for... Will remain unclear, I guess, forever. He also enjoyed enabling people's addictions. Like, I, I think Aggie and I went through gallons and pounds of free booze uh, and drugs from Rusty, and he never complained that we wasted all of his drugs. He seemed happy to give all of his stuff to us. I did feel bad, though, ever, that even though it was completely that bar's fault that they served me 14 <laughs> drinks in 10 minutes, allegedly I was out of control and needed to be arrested when it was his best friend's bar i was like listen i don't know where you got that from i mean if, if it's so wrong to do jumping somersaults into people's full dining tables i don't want to be right i mean it was fourth of july that's what george washington did in pearl harbor and the tea harbor and everything that he was doing so i mean it's called patriotism and you know that's how i'm saying i'm standing by that i, I, I remember eggy when you were doing that you were uh weren't you like live streaming on instagram uh, well that was just because and, I really wanted to let everybody know how much of a patriot I was so that they could enjoy my patriotic attitude. So, but what was funny is when you were live streaming on Instagram, you took on this caller to join you. And it was one of my subscribers, Nuticus. And then he, he ended up coming in to hang out at my house. And he's like, hey, remember when Eggie got kicked out of that bar? A lot of people have been able to say those words before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, you know, Rusty did enjoy his bars. He yeah. basically lived there every evening. It was like a second home. It was like a sitcom where I felt like I <laughs> maybe was in the Truman Show because I would go with Rusty to some of his local bars and legit, like, everybody would know his name when he walks in and start shaking his hand and shit. Like, he's like a local hero to all the people who are alcoholics and never leave the bar. <laughs> it's not like the Truman Show. is like cheers, you know. Cheers. Uh, for me, yeah. it was crazy. Like, wow, how does everybody know this dude? Well, you know, now we know where a lot of that YouTube money went to. <laughs> Giant <laughs> alcohol budget. Yeah, watching, watching his movies, uh, that funded his alcoholism. <laughs> the, uh, right. Well, it, like remember when like he, many great he artists. The, remember when he had the 4th of July party? But it wasn't on the 4th of July. I think it was on the 3rd of July. That's when he had his big party. 
And, and we all, all went to go weirdos. see Boss Baby 2 yeah, instead. We, yeah, we all went to go see Boss Baby 2 instead. Like, all these weirdos showed up at Rusty's house. And we just dipped to see Boss Baby 2. But honestly, the crowd that we were in was maybe weirder than his party. Because we had the, like, the, the school for, like, mentally ill people behind us who were going like, Do you guys remember this? I thought that was Aggie sitting behind us. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then we had these kids uh, in front of us who were just, like, watching TikToks with their sound on. The uh, yeah, time. actually, no, I do remember that. Oh. See, was, I get it confused because um, in 2019, um, I was also in Florida <laughs> for the uh, release of Joker. And I went and saw Joker with Nick Fuentes and, like, 10 guys. And they like they had already seen it like eight times, and they were quoting the entire movie scene by scene. So I almost was getting these two situations conflated. But when you reminded me about the people watching TikToks during the movie and the Family Guy funny clips during the movie, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll come back to you. Now. Isn't that the ideal way to watch Boss Baby too? <laughs> it, it is the ideal way. You have like you have mental patients behind you making weird <laughs> sounds. And then kids in front of you just watching Family Guy funny moments on their on their phones the entire time. And you know what? I wouldn't have experienced <laughs> it any other way. Do you guys have any other memories with Rusty you want to talk about? Well, yeah, um, Rusty was the very first YouTuber I, I ever met, aside from I think aside from BG Cumbie and Wavy Websurf, is the first person on YouTube I ever met. Well, now was you have that a one good less person you've met on YouTube. Yeah, he was nice. Yeah. Uh, it was at VidCon, uh, I don't know, five years ago, 2018, 2019. I don't know. It's one of those years. I remember it was like maybe the second episode of Trash Rats ever, and it nobody was on it but Rusty, and then like you and maybe Cumby. It- and yeah. I was like, who the fuck is this guy? Who's taking over Trash Rats? Who's this Kino Corner guy? <laughs> Get him the fuck off my show. And somebody strange has joined us. Who could this be? Who's Mystery? And now Fifth he's got now we're gay lovers. Mortal Whoa! Combat. <laughs> Speak of the devil. And BG Cumby appears. Mr. Cumby, you don't appear to be... Uh... Very emotionally stoic right now. I can see you're very moved by the events. I mean, I've been I've been trying to make the video on Rusty Rusty passing for a week now, and I just can't I can't do it. What's the mental block there? Because I feel like you have so many memories with them; it should be flowing off your tongue, you know. Every time I, every time I find the words, I start crying. To be honest, well, I think it's really manly to cry. So if you want to let it out right here and now, we would all support you and probably stand and applaud for your tears. Mm-hmm. I might. Just give me a minute. Uh, Aggie, did you have any memories with Rusty you wanted to share? Well, I think it's very unfortunate. I don't I don't know if this video survived anywhere, but intoxicated quesadilla review, you know, from uh, the titular Creator Clash event. That was certainly a dank situation. I really enjoyed putting on Rusty's uh, minstrel gloves and afro and dancing in his living room. <clears throat> I really enjoyed when I called him during a uh, drunken rampage on his stream and it went to his voicemail that exposed all of his personal information. <laughs> However, due to the circumstances of the recent ongoings i guess everybody knows all this personal information now anyway due to numerous welfare checks and phone calls or whatever so frankly i can be held accountable and responsible for none of it but at the end of the day i just think to myself when i think of the number one african-american blues musician of my generation who really touched all of our hearts and the insides of our fingers with a lot of sharp blades there's nobody greater than richard wang otherwise known as rusty cage also known as Benjamin Steele. Uh, man, I knew him man, as man, uh, man. I knew him as Philip Trom. <laughs> yeah, it turns out when you uh when you go on Spotify anyway, it says the name or whatever. I, re- um, I remember the first time I remember the first time I went to Rusty Cage's house. I was there with BG Cumby. We drove over to Gainesville. Oh yeah, that was and that one was of the fun. first things. 
one of the first things that Cumbie did was ask Rusty if he could take a photo of Rusty's driver's license. <laughs> did he do it? <laughs> yeah, he did. It. Rusty was I like, did. I, did. I don't know. This is kind of weird. <laughs> so I should feel good Cumbie that when Cumbie asked for my phone number, I ignored him, right? <laughs> Wait, did you? Is that why you did that? <laughs> I mean, it sounds like you're <laughs> if you're just taking pictures of people's IDs. I don't know if I trust you with my phone number. I thought I was just getting big leaked. <laughs> a big leak? I, I don't know. It's pretty small league over here. That was my main point is that Rusty would hang out with people no matter how small and pathetic they are. Yeah. Like, other than maybe yeah. Emp Lemon here, you know, all, all of us were glued together by Rusty's love and influence. I never would have met yeah. Aggie if not for Rusty. Like, I literally met all of you through him. Yeah, you met Rusty. Or I met I met you through Rusty, yeah. Every it's, single uh, one of you was like me going to Rusty's house, and then look who's there. It's M. Plemon. It's Aggie. And, uh, you know, unironically, mm -hmm. Deep Lore, some people don't know about this. I actually met Rusty Cage through Kino Corner. Mm -hmm. He, uh, Kino and I went to that Tampa, Florida Dick Masterson program and I believe, oh, okay. uh, and that's where Rust. That's where I also met Rusty at that time. And in fact, frankly, I believe that's also where I met Emp. I'm uh, pretty sure too. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. that. Yeah, that's what happened. That was a so, that was a weird scene. <laughs> yeah, was, I can First, remember it like it was yesterday. We're all sitting in the hotel room, and uh, Emp's like playing fucking Minecraft on his iPad or whatever. We're all just like <laughs> sitting there, just like staring at each other. No, like, oh. you know what I you know what I remember from from that, Eggy. What's up? Because Eggy and I shared a hotel room. Oh yeah, that. And that one night we got, uh, I think the first night we got pretty trashed, and uh, we ended up walking to the McDonald's, and then they were closed, but you could go through the drive-through. So we got an Uber just to <laughs> take us through the McDonald's drive-through. And, and and that then, exact moment, and then you, while I was and then, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you lost the keys to your rental car in that Uber. So mm -hmm. then the next day, you're like, "Holy shit, I can't get like I." The keys to my rental car are gone. And then I was like, hey, you probably lost in the Uber last night. So then we looked up to try to like contact the Uber driver, but she quit that morning. <laughs> oh my God. She, she was no because the wallet had so much money in it, she could retire. Well, I, no, <laughs> so I only lost the keys to the Uber. I mean, the oh keys to the rental car. However, the one yeah, problem yeah. was then for the next three days, I had no uh, change of clothes or anything. <laughs> so I wore that MDE shirt in that purple beanie with the eye on it for like three days straight um but it was all it all turned out well because um i my insurance just allowed the rental to be towed back to the airport with me in the uh tow truck so i got to ride back to the airport at like five o'clock in the morning on that monday or whatever that was but yeah honestly you know, I, I was like thinking a little bit and nobody even said that i stunk so i felt pretty good about that <laughs> honestly like yeah with AAA, you can get a free free tow you know, Rusty. Rusty did like going down to Tampa and creating highly dysfunctional situations, much <laughs> like the one last year when at one of the final major events we had with Rusty. I, th I think many of us were there. The Creator Clash weekend. Yeah. Where fun um, weekend. Rusty happened to rent the worst Airbnb I've ever personally stayed in. Yeah, I wasn't allowed to stay with y'all, but yeah. Did Cumby break a TV or something? Well, Rusty got charged for a TV being broken mm. that I don't think was ever turned on during the entire duration of our stay. But, but it who wasn't knows? Cumby who broke it, right? Because I, I no. Thought... So the TV was in the TV was in uh, Turkey Tom's room, and it didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work from the very beginning, and they tried to say Rusty broke it. Do you think Turkey Tom broke it? Uh. Well, Zoomers are supposed to be good with technology, so I don't, I don't think you messed with it. Okay. You know, this does remind me of one thing real quick. Um, I still owe Rusty $200 for me staying in his Airbnb in the 2022 Creator Clash. We never resolved that, but oh well. Uh, I think don't you're good it. on that. Put $200. Well, yes, uh, Rusty, uh, lucky Rusty, Rusty was rich. Okay, I'm going to say this right now. Rusty, Rusty tried to convince all of us that he was some poor, starving artist. That is not true. Um, <laughs> because when I went to the Renaissance Fair with him, uh -huh. he was dropping two hundred fifty dollars on coonskin hats like it was nothing. So that's part uh, of his culture, I, though. I, I Obviously, he wasn't some Rusty's poor, house. starving artist. I love how when you go to Rusty's house, the first thing you see is the the sign on his door that's like 
if I don't know you, I'll shoot you. It's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, this well. is a Florida man right here. <laughs> well, the first thing I usually see when I went over there is the big patch of mold on the ceiling next to the air conditioning <laughs> unit. And it would, uh, it would it would keep getting bigger every single time, and then not uh, it would never be addressed. So maybe maybe some of those spores got in his head and messed him up or something. Do y'all know, know uh, <laughs> y'all know the ordeal with Brittany and her mattress? Uh, mm-hmm. I think we should focus on Rusty. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't think he would want us talking about his friends or family too much. Well, I mean, it, it kind of relates to that, but basically. Uh, yeah, their mattresses were filled with mold too. So I think, oh uh, <laughs> you know, I, I really, I really do think that's a good theory that Imp has is that the the black the black mold spores kind of influence. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. Isn't you, there, isn't Imp, there you like said, a movie uh, about mold that like you know controls people's minds or something? Yeah, Imp, yeah. You, you were saying earlier he's had some erratic behavior. Could you describe some of that, Imp? Well, you know, like. When we first started working together on YouTube, he'd be down to make stuff all the time. But then, right about the time State of the YouTube ended for mysterious reasons, uh, he all of a sudden just became a lot more reluctant to work on anything creative. We had all sorts of videos planned, and he'd keep telling me, oh yeah, well, we'll, we'll get to it eventually. And then, like, weeks would turn to months. And then I keep coming over and asking, hey, Rusty, are you almost done with this edition of the comic? And... He never would be, and on the times he would, he'd end up saying to me, like, uh, oh, yeah, I finished, I'm out, and I'm already started on volume three of the comic. I'm like, but Rusty, what about all these videos we have planned together, you know, the little uh, shake and bake action, trying to combine our talents together to make something really cool for YouTube, for the viewers. And uh, no, he'd always either go back to, I'm working on another comic, I'm working on another album. I'm building a guillotine. And how how dare you want to actually work on a video and not wait more than a year before it's even addressed again? So it seems like Rusty all of a sudden started isolating himself from the rest of the world. That's the uh, that's the impression I started getting because the uh, the creativity that we were supposed to work on together ended up getting blocked down the stretch by by something i don't know what I, I think maybe it's just like the place that he lives you know he lives in the middle of the swamp you know i remember walking to his front yard and seeing like baby alligators just like walking around his front yard uh you know he's a swamp man and he was becoming more and more of a swamp man yeah he was depressed that his swampy land was killing his trees and his whole yard was just covered in dead trees <laughs> uh, i i think if you really paid attention to his guillotine videos, it seemed clear that the downfall of society was getting to him. And he he was really letting a lot of, like, reactor, Tim Pool-esque conspiracy mm. theories get to his head. And, you know, By the way, much like my reactor? hero, Aaron Bushnell, I, I feel like somebody might have hacked into his brain a bit and convinced him to hurt himself. By the way, where is reactor? You know, he's very silent on all of this. He said he was going to be here today, and he he never showed. Oh, is is Tim is Tim uh, cracking the whip on him? Yeah, again? too busy slaving away for old Tim, <laughs> living in the I shadow remember, of his living in the shadow of his brother. Like, uh, I, I remember you know, when I went up to the compound, up. and one of the first person I first people I saw when I got there, I walk in. It's like nine in the morning. I walk into the house, and I see Chris there and i'm like hey chris it's been a long time and i i you know i'm like hey we should catch up wait and who's goes, chris oh, yeah reactor yeah so i see reactor okay and i'm like yeah hey like uh it's been a long time like we should catch up and he's like oh yeah 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 well i'm really busy right now maybe later he while you're at his house the... when <laughs> i was at his house he didn't show he, he lit, I, I think he like just stayed away from the green room for the entire rest of the day. He was too busy to hang out while you're visiting his home. Yeah, yeah, basically. Okay. Yeah, well, it's no. it's not just his house. It's like a compound. Like, uh, it's like some kind of crazy cult compound they got out there. Yeah, I know, dude. I went on there uh, on that pop culture crisis show. And, Same. Uh, I think I think I pissed off all their followers. Oh, <laughs> I, I definitely were, did too. We were losing subscribers while I was on, so they haven't invited me back. Yeah, I 
I pissed off their audience and hit on Mary the whole time. So I mean, I kind of it's <laughs> another opportunity I've blown. I, was, I, I remember, I remember going up there and I didn't know what we were going to talk about. It was the day before my flight, and uh, Mary texted me and was like, "Hey, so we're going to talk about the Little Mermaid." The, the Disney adaptation of Little Mermaid. And I'm like, oh, fuck. And she's like, we got you a ticket, but you don't have to go watch it with us. And I'm thinking like, you know, if you're flying me up there, you're putting me up in a hotel. Like the least I could do is watch this movie. Uh, it was terrible. But then on the show, I decided that I was going to be like super pro. I was going to basically be the Florian Hemsel of their podcast. And I was going to talk about how great the Little Mermaid was. <laughs> which pissed off everybody in their audience. <laughs> and they go. started losing subscribers. Yeah. But yeah, Chris uh, reactor didn't talk to me at all that whole day. I was like, Hey, we need to like catch up. It's been a long time. And he just ghosted me. He ghosted me in real life. He's ghosting all of us right now. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to freak anybody out, but you know, um, reactor, AKA Chris <laughs> pool. You ever heard of this guy named Chris pool? We found at a certain website. It's called 4chan. You look it up. Um, I'm sorry to think that this 4chan guy probably shaved his head, maybe uh, stretched his face out a little bit to the sides, and thought he was going to go undercover in the new uh, Chud Central, a.k.a. Tim Pool Network. Oh, my goodness. Mind equals blown. Is, is Chris Pool the, uh, the original Chud Jack? Yeah, he's the creator of 4chan that radicalized all, us, all of us from an early age. Well, you 4chan, know, Rusty, 4chan TV radicalized me. That's how Rusty I did the always. Corner. Rusty did always like his uh, random offbeat shows where he'd fly across the country to go on some show by some guy has, that has like ten thousand Twitter followers and it's his only mm. claim to fame. And the, yeah. the thing gets like five hundred views on YouTube. But he always got a kick out of um, showing up on like some just the absolute backwater trenches of YouTube. And then I guess somehow expecting that to result in a career advancement for him. Well, no, he was, yeah. it was self selfless in a way. Like he's willing to be on a little guy's show just because it makes him feel mm -hmm. good to, to be the most popular guy in the room for a little bit. Yeah, maybe my, my yeah. theory is that he's... it just gives him something to do that doesn't involve working on videos with me, which he, <laughs> uh, he hated apparently. Was he intimidated yeah. by you, Emp? Maybe he was jealous well, that like, it, every time you post, it's an instant classic, 2.3 million views, and his guillotine videos just weren't cutting it. No, not 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 every time Emp posts. I remember working with Emp once. It was Should hell. we really be we, trash we posted, like this? We, we posted that video, Emp, and it just it just got like age-restricted, taken off of YouTube like the day that we yeah. posted it. Okay, well, no then. wonder Rusty didn't want to work with you. Well, Rusty and I have <laughs> shared in our problems with youtube however maybe my different philosophy and uh just keeping my head down and putting out more material that didn't uh that clashed with his idea of creating a whole five-part series whining about how he's not getting views anymore and then wondering why he's not getting views anymore but um it's good to see that in his final moments he created something that was truly viewed and well liked and just made it the final splash throughout the internet airwaves, just as he got his start with the original knife game. It all came a little bit full circle there for a bit. Yeah, it was kind of unfortunate timing, really, like when you have people like Too Mad commit suicide. I know Rusty had been probably planning on this being the finale to his series for years now, but he, it took him so long other people kind of got to the punch before he did, and now it's like, oh, what, this is the third YouTuber suicide this week? Ugh. Yeah. Well, they say that the celebrity yeah. deaths come in groups of three. Yeah, too oh, mad. Uh, almost James Somerton for a little bit, and then Rusty Cage. He kind of got big leagued, even in death. <laughs> Yeah, it, 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 it is kind of cruel that this crowning achievement of his career that everything's been leading up to, even that ended up getting overshadowed by other stuff by a bigger blacker man more popular <laughs> yeah that's uh that's too bad. kind of a shame when you put it that way yeah did rusty have any like good thing that can shine on into the future or is it kind of just like pale imitations of what other people did the noose the noose song noose song that's okay gonna 
that's going to shine into the future. I'm going to teach a lot of people how to tie their shoes. <laughs> um, well, I personally think the knife game has just entered the cultural zeitgeist because people, people claim to have heard that song like 50 years ago, but no, Rusty invented that. You know, well, that's, yeah, but isn't that really kind of Rusty's? Like, I, I thought his it. kind of like the gimmick that he likes to run with is like claiming that he invented invented songs he did not make. Like my music that I made that he calls the Rusty Cage theme song. Mm. Like the joke is that he made it, but really I, you know, he took credit for it. I Wait, thought the, he was the doing back, the same thing with Knife Game. The background music. Oh, I, yeah, my background I, I, music. I remember that. You made that. I remember that drama. Yeah, well, I made the background music. I mean, everybody knows that, but I thought that you know, the, the knife dun, game. Dun, 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 that song? Yeah. Yeah, I've no, used that you background didn't make music that. in a lot of videos. Yeah, I made that. I always credit Rusty Cage. No, I always you... credit Rusty Cage. Well, you ripped that. that's the joke is to credit him. But my point is, the knife game did start in like the 1600s. Rusty's like trying to, like, Berenstein Bears, whatever that shit's called, into our brain. Mandela effect. Yeah, he's trying yeah. to trick us into thinking he made it, but it's been around forever. Well, at no, least he, he got to entertain a generation of middle schoolers, and we all know it's very difficult to entertain <laughs> middle schoolers. So Wait. that's that's at least part of his talent that will be forever known as part of his legacy. Guys, this always happens. Somebody dies, and then the bickering starts. Like I think we need to focus on the positive aspects of Rusty. I think, I think we need to focus on what's in the will. Okay. The, the I don't think it's coming royalties to, to the Rusty Cage background <laughs> no, music. No, no. It's potentially God. a million dollar no, it's, contract. It's gonna all it's it's gonna all go to BG Cumby, but he's gonna get nothing. This is our best <laughs> this is our best freaking friend. If I still like, have the password not, to the Trash Rats channel, like I think I have the right to keep it, right? Trash Rats is now my channel. Cause I can change the name to like M Monkey Jones, the original. You know what? I can't be here for this. I'm i I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, Another one bites the dust. Well, yeah, you know, I, I understand why time. I understand why Cumbie is taking the news a little hard. But, you know, honestly, when I heard the news, I kind of felt relief. I mean, my life has not really changed in any substantial way. But now I know I can I can just stop wasting my time trying to convince Rusty to do these projects that will never get done. And now there's just no shadow of a doubt that. I don't have to waste my time doing that anymore because the fate has already been sealed. What's happened has happened, and I can finally move on to my own direction. Well, Empic, I don't know. What you're saying kind of sounds callous to me, like you thought of Rusty yeah. more as like a business partner and less of a human or a friend. Well, you know, I try to be friendly, but after a while, you kind of expect stuff to get done you know you kind of expect Didn't to not you, be like, sitting hang around out his house all the time because like your internet at your house was terrible so you like uploaded well, yeah, that all was me trying to lobby him and convince him to get out of the chair to get out of the tent and oh, start no. working on think... some good videos you know he he's always complaining and whining about how his videos don't get any views and i'm just telling him well, look rusty all you need to do is Work with me on this, and we'll get you. so like I tried. Okay, don't look at this as some sort of exploitative thing. I tried to get Rusty out of his slump and back in to the spirit of making the same types of videos that got him popular in the first place. And for whatever reason, he just wanted no part of it. Well, Emp, my question to you is: uh, on the night that he died, how come you didn't answer the phone? Oh, I was busy playing uh, Factorio with my friends. Cumby, are you doing uh, okay? Yeah. No. Hey, Amp, I have a question for you. <laughs> sure. Can you now no longer play Factorio because you realize that, that you playing that caused your best friend to die? Well, I, I, don't, I don't think I caused anything. You know, does this like he, did he I just cause didn't like prevent. did I cause like Israel to bomb Gaza or whatever because I was playing Factorio? No, I don't think so. Stuff just happens, you know. And I don't, I, I don't like this idea that I just sat by doing nothing while Rusty, who it seems like, let's be honest, he already made up his mind of what was going to happen. He uh, just needed to talk to you. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I was watching his stream, but I hit a really big bong rip. And my phone was like on the other side of the couch, and I was just kind of like couch locked well, as he was and, calling me, you know. 
Well, and, and you were coming on to my stream because it was Oscars night. Oh, was oh, that yeah, the that, same that, night? That, that's also yeah, true. Yeah, it was the same night. Yeah, why the fuck and, did and, he do that during the Oscars, man? Like, all the real pedophiles were watching to see Lily Gladstone get fucked. <laughs> yeah. Hey, by the way, Monkey, uh, we're still waiting. <laughs> you deleted your stream so nobody knows what you're talking about. <laughs> no, I unlisted it. You did? <laughs> yeah, it. I unlisted it. <laughs> wow. Nobody knows what you're talking about. Uh, Cumby, Cumby, please. We're sorry that we were bickering before. I know you want to say some good stuff about Rusty, so please go ahead. Well, yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, just I just I just think it's really disrespectful to. Uh, be talking so much trash about him really i agree i mean the I jokes agree. no the jokes are fine the jokes are fine it's what he would have wanted but uh when we're sitting here just like actually talking trash about him as a hey there's like, only one but, person here talking like trash his, about him. i have i have lots of respect for rusty i have tremendous respect you no know, like, like when we're making attacks on like his personal character like that's just too far okay well no, look, he may have been YouTubers. a little lazy and compulsive and an alcoholic but you know, I would call him it's, my friend at the end right, of the day. And it's, it's, it, it, it might have ended; tra it, it ended tragically. I'll admit that. However, Actually, I don't think we should allow yeah. a bad ending to diminish something that was demonstrably a, a successful partnership. Look, there's three YouTubers who have created my success. Okay, it was Reactor, number one. Because he taught me how to evade copyright systems on YouTube. Mm. Uh, Justin Wang and Rusty Cage. So I owe everything I have to those three guys. What about Florian Himsel? Of course, I owe a lot to Florian. I mean, he watched Shoah with me. He watched a whole nine-hour documentary. Just he to, has to little a video. else to do. <laughs> just to do a, bit, a podcast with me on my second channel that got less than 1,000 views. <laughs> As Florian Himsel likes to say, it's not about how many views, it's about the content of the message. Something that mm. M. Fleming will fight against tooth and nail. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I bet he was fuming that the Mario movie didn't win any awards at the Oscars. <laughs> that I got snubbed for Miyazaki. Oh, no. The n fucking Nintendo masterpiece got snubbed. I think the Ken song <laughs> got snubbed. The Ken song did get snubbed. As I was saying on the Oscar stream, I like at this Christmas party I was at, you know, all these, all my friends had like their, you know, their kids over a lot of like daughters and stuff. They weren't singing the Billie Eilish song. They were all like grouping up and singing the I'm just Ken song. So to think that this is like a song that only guys liked, it's like, no. A <laughs> combi, what's going on, man? What's wrong? I can't do it anymore. <laughs> All my friends are dead. All my friends are dead. <laughs> you still got us. Yeah, man. She. Uh, I know, your friends. <laughs> so that's kind of offensive. If you ask me. No, it's. <laughs> First it was three Bach and then Dylan and now Rusty and uh, it's, it's my fault. Oh my God. It's Dylan. Not your fault. Yes, it is. No, 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 no. <laughs> it was Rusty's declining career. That was at fault. You shouldn't blame yourself. For it was that. my fault. I didn't reach out to him. <laughs> you know, all of us are hurting, Cumbie, and like, it's not like he reached out to us either, right? Like, your friendship's a two-way street. <laughs> no, it's not a two-way street. This is my fault. It was my fault with Dylan, too. Because I didn't pick up the phone. I mean, I suppose any of us could have seen Rusty building a highly publicized guillotine for the last two years and maybe uh, thought that that wasn't the greatest idea, but... Well, I thought it was more show. like... For like Nancy Pelosi, like you don't well, usually commit suicide too, yeah. with that kind of contraption. I thought he was gonna be the. Uh, I thought he was gonna be entering the bad people, but I don't know. 
So frankly, I was caught by surprise, but I guess any well-adjusted person who was not also a uh, compulsive, monstrous brained animal like myself might have uh, thought twice uh, about just allowing that to continue. But Uh I will say that I did believe that it was going to be a lot of uh, social media influencers of the bad nature that were going to be led through that lemonade stand for their final quench. Uh, I mean, are we all, I mean, is it, are we sure that uh, this wasn't a freak accident? You know, this was a, uh, you know, Rusty just kind of felt like the time was right, like it was it. He, I kind of thought that he was going for a French Revolution in Florida. Yeah. Well, that morning, he he did text me saying he was hoping for a maestro sweep at the Oscars, so maybe that was the final straw. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Do we know? Do we know for sure he's dead though? I, I, or is he just presumed dead? From like, what like I he's, was told, he's missing, and they gave up the the search. Hit, I've contacted his mom on Facebook Messenger, and she said they had a lovely funeral service yesterday. And I have no reason to not believe her. I'm so. Assuming it was closed casket. <laughs> I don't know, man. Or they, had, they had to get two, they had to get a big casket and one little casket, like a shoebox. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's the kind of joking that I don't know if Rusty would appreciate. Well, you know, if if you think about it, Rusty's whole career was kind of a joke. So I don't don't really understand how being a little bit light in the in the funeral is going to be that that much against the spirit of what he represented. Yeah, I, I guess at, in this funeral with his friends, it's probably better. That's probably why like you were not invited to the family one, because you would have been mm-hmm. cracking jokes to his grieving parents. Yeah, I can't I, believe that. I, I wouldn't have liked that very much. I don't, I don't even... I don't even want to speak to you right now, Em, because this is just... Like, you're going to make me say it, dude. This is fucked up. It really is. Yeah, I think it's fucked up that uh, we never did get to finish the Shark Tank series. And that's just going to be stuck on his computer now forever. Uh, I guess if we want to talk about something a little lighter, I know, uh, Cumbie, you you had some... No, none of you even cared. Really, that's... No, none of you even... None of you even gave half a shit, like, about him from what I'm seeing on this stream. Like, I'm done. I I, I cared, like, a little bit. I'm out, dude. All right, well, have a good night, man. All right, I'm I'm sorry to I'm sorry to blow up on y'all like this, but I I can't sit here anymore. So, Eggy, Monkey, Kino, Peace. We M- can kick out Emp and keep you. I like you better than him. I don't know, man. Why? M- no, no, no. I knew Ru- <laughs> I knew Rusty gonna- way better than Cumby did. You're gonna have to answer for this shit one day, Emp. That's all I gotta say. But peace, everybody. Rest in peace, Rusty. Good night, I guess. See you, Cumbie. Long live a real one. I mean, I, I would. I guess you know. I understand where the pain has come from. And uh, when Cumbie was talking about um, his previous uh, friends that passed, you know, that is that's a true. He's been through a lot. That is very true. And uh, and he's younger than the rest of us. You know, he's kind of he's gone through a lot early on. And it's, uh, I'm sure it's, uh, it's a harsher, more severe feeling versus, you know, like somebody, Rusty was somebody who I saw a lot of myself in too, where, uh, you know, I see myself as a man of the blues. I like to get wasted all the time. I actually just lost, I went to the casino and I smelled so bad and I was awake for like 30 hours. I don't know why. Like I was, I've been playing a Japanese RPG and I don't know, I was all hyped up and I was... I just went out of control, and I was driving uh, 75 miles an hour in a 30 to the casino. I lost a bunch <laughs> of money. And I came home and uh, prepared 10 pounds of uh, SpaghettiOs from Walmart that are 69 cents a can because that's all that I have left to eat for the rest of the month. And I really feel like, you know, I could go and listen to Rusty's Knife Cage song and his new song, and uh, <laughs> there was a sort of a cathartic feeling when that would happen. So... I feel like we were, is kindred spirit the right word? 
So, uh, you know, if I see somebody who uh, is in the same mental state as me just take their own life, I'm like, uh, maybe I don't approach it in that same kind of way where it's like, oh, my goodness, I'm immediately grieving and heartbroken. It's more like I'm patting your corpse on the back like, hey, man, I feel that. Yeah, I know I, I know how that is. I feel that one right there. And then I just continue uh, seething at life for another year or two. I well, just, you know, I, I've, I've had a I'll lot of friends ahead, die. I've I've had a lot of friends die in the past, a lot of close ones uh die in the past and uh, Rusty for instance. Rusty just most recently and it's just uh you know you kind of get you know it's like a shock that comes to you and then after a time it's just sort of a numbing, you know. Mm -hmm. You just get numb to it. I think philosophically when it comes to an early death uh i i think about suicide differently than like a freak accident like you know drunk driving like that could happen to anybody but suicide that's a choice like rusty cage was clearly a man in pain as emp has described he spent pretty much ever since covid began uh something had worked his way into his consciousness uh, and it changed him, and he didn't have the zest for life like he used to. He did not want to work on with Emp Lemon on YouTube videos. Like, yeah. that is the dream come true for any given person. And he basically threw Emp to the wayside and said, I, I don't care about this. I want to build a guillotine. And well, you know, Rusty oh, certainly I mean, what, did what do, yeah. he, he certainly did do a bunch of drunk driving. I think he was in... The car that hit a person down on University Avenue here killed some college kid. They had to install speed bumps after that, and ever since that, well, he told that story on the show, he, but he never said he was in the car when it happened. He just said oh, that he was in friend. the car. Yeah, wow. maybe. Well, maybe the guilt from that. Uh, no, no, no. Wasn't it, his, about it. wasn't it his friend? Yeah, well, his, his friend, friend was driving, driving, but he was he was in the car. Yeah, you know, like Ray, like Ray Lewis or like Dante Stallworth when they're in that car <laughs> that killed that guy. It, it's it's all just. It is too bad that he's passed and he can't defend himself. Maybe he felt bad about it, maybe he didn't. But the point is, every time I go over those speed bumps that are there now, uh, I think of him, (laughs) and I guess I will think of him forever. We don't know who that uh, that innocent teenager was that had their entire life ahead of them, but I mean, that's the breaks of Matthew Broderick or whatever. Which one? (laughs) It was Matthew Broderick, right? It wasn't Michael J. Fox. I don't know. I get him confused. Yeah, it was Broderick. Yeah. Yeah. My point is. Rusty committed suicide because he thought it was right for him. Who am I to judge another man for how he should end or continue his own life? He owned it, and he fucking ended it the way he wanted to go out, okay? Why would I feel misery and sorrow? Would that not be selfish for me to expect him to continue to live in misery just so he can make us some fucking shitty songs and YouTube videos? Like, if he's better off dead, then let him fucking die, and I'm happy for him. You know what? You're right. I agree. Cumby is being selfish by come on here, throwing on the water works, trying to make himself the center of attention when this is all about Rusty and trying to trying to piece together his legacy right here, right now. And I don't know how we're supposed to do that and focus on that task when some bumbling fool comes here in here can't even have a complete sentence without breaking down. I, I I I agree with that sentiment, Monkey. Rus- oh, it's it's, I, it's, it's better wanna, that Rusty's gone. Wait, what I want to say Emp, is that you complain about Rusty like not collaborating with you, but he saw the collaboration that you and I did and how it resulted only in pain and misery. Do you think that maybe he looked at your video on the thing and said, "I don't want that happening to me," so? It's just going to it's just going to bring more pain and misery to me because I'm going to have to work with this guy and everything I'll do with this guy is going to be just totally banned by YouTube is going to bring me nothing is going to it's only going to result in pain. Well, you know, he he put his eggs in that basket and ultimately at the end of the road, I think the numbers spoke for themselves and uh maybe He didn't feel so good about that. But, you know, the door was always open, even up until the very end. If Rusty came to me that very day and said, hey, I'm finally ready to finish the Shark Tank review edit. I said, let's go. All right. Let's go. I'll do whatever you need to finish this video. 
But you know what? No, he 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 had his principles, and apparently part of the principles was uh, not doing anything creative with Emp Lemon for uh, the last five or so years of his life. It got so bad that Emp had to start doing podcasts with Florian Himsel of all people. Yeah, you know, I mean, That's I got a, a kick. Point. I got a kick to make to make good videos. Hey, Florian's a good guy. But when you could be collabing with Rusty Cage and you got to, you know, slum it with Florian, like that's a low point in your career. Yeah, I mean, you know, say that's well, all Florian sugar babies, you know, they seem <laughs> to be happy. That's got to be the low point in their life is being Florian sugar baby. But it's the repeat of uh, in that Boogie documentary where the hooker is like, once Boogie was dropping that carpet roll on me, I knew it was time to become a good trad wife. And she just <laughs> immediately dropped everything overnight. Probably also why our Uber driver quit. She saw me in the back just looking like it. I thought I was having like five different kinds of seizures and heart attacks and strokes as I was just shoving those McNuggets fistful, my whole entire fist in my mouth. I was detaching my jaw. But she just got home and she started crying. And I still follow her son on Instagram five years later. That's how we figured out how to. That's how I figured out no, how to like, no. contact with her. Peggy, don't beat yourself up. She looked in the back and said, oh my God, it's the Cremo corner. <laughs> oh. I, I can't do this. I can't do this anymore. If this guy's in the back of my car, her, her uh, the minivan started fl- flooding with too many lady juices when she saw a real alpha male in the building. No, but shout out. Remember, we were watching Storage Wars in the hotel room, and there was some really ugly woman with blue hair. But I was sitting there like licking the TV screen because I was so hopped off of that good <laughs> McDonald's sodium bomb. And I looked her up. I found the woman from Storage Wars. It was, she was only on like five minutes of the episode. I still found her on LinkedIn. Uh, she was married at that point. The episode was years old, but yeah, you know, Rusty. I'm sure where I'm sure that night he was really feeling my energy, and uh, you know, like I said, there was some kind of some kind of link there. The first piece of YouTube merchandise I was ever gifted in 2017 was a 3XL noose shirt, which was Rusty. <laughs> and I didn't know who Rusty Cage was. There was a uh, woman from St. Louis, Missouri, who was a postal worker who uh, I believe was, um, she would currently be 54 years old, I believe. So she would have been in her late 40s at this time. She gifted me the Rusty Cage noose shirt and uh, like tagged him. And he commented on one of my videos in like 2017, like, oh, nice. You got, yeah, thanks for the support. And I said, what am I, I wear a noose shirt in public. Don't you think it's a little like uh, inflammatory? Like if I walk out in a 3XL noose shirt, uh, do you know that? Stormfront used to sell a shirt with the same graphic and it said with text on it. Also, I just know this because I just saw like an old thing recently. Um, it said it's not illegal to be white, dot, 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 yet. And then it has a noose on it. And it was a Stormfront t shirt they used to sell like 30 years ago. I just, for some reason, I saw this in a picture recently, but I was like, ah, oh. I mean, I get it because the new song, but I mean, that was still to receive that and open it. I'm like, well, this is going to be a great pajama shirt because I could never wear this in public. <laughs> and that was my first interaction with any Rusty Cage material. And I want to say thank you, T. That was her, her name's T. And she was a postal worker in St. Louis, Missouri, uh, with a lot to say on YouTube. She was one of my original fans from like 2015. So, really, you know, like I said, the, the bond runs deep. Rusty really was a very positive influence on my life. Uh, should we give our final thoughts on Rusty before we get the hell out of here? Amp, do you have any like final memories or anything? Um, I guess maybe one day we can use the power of AI to finally finish that video that we spent six months working on for nothing to come out. Yeah, Emp, would it be that hard to put all of Rusty's videos through the AI thing and just the like, AI generate some Rusty Cage videos in the future? Well, the technology has already come very far in the past couple years or so. So, would I'm you have hoping... access to his YouTube channel to post those if you made those? Well, I, I don't know. I, I don't have custodial control over anything related to him. But I guess there is a big repository online of rusty source material if we were to somehow recreate his likeness. And uh, maybe then that could finally be the finishing touches of that video that was supposed to come out three years ago. But just 
never happened for whatever reason. And uh, at least in that case, maybe it would be the most fitting part of his legacy because for the first time, he will have actually finished something besides himself. Oh, wow. That's, I mean, that's a bit harsh. Are uh, you going to start crying? Fucking cry, baby, come be over here. Wham, my crying. friend's dead. Fuck him. I don't give well, a shit. Uh, you think I care Rusty died? I did this stream for fucking Super Chats. I don't fucking care that he's dead. <laughs> but go ahead, g Thanks. give us your fucking sad story about Rusty, Kino, so I can read these fucking Super Chats and leave. Yeah, this might not be the you right time for it. I don't want to cut this in, but you didn't read my Super Chat on the Mumkey show yesterday, the Mumkey and Big show. We did, we did. I I got to it 15 minutes later, but we did read okay. it. I was in my car driving, so I didn't hear I that. I did part interrupt E. Rich to read it, so it's an important moment in the show. Appreciate that. But go ahead, Keen. I'm trying to read it. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm Okay, now I can finally uh I can finally see the uh chat. I was trying to find the chat. But YouTube, YouTube's new UI is absolutely terrible, and I can't find the chat here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, it, must be, it must be because I have ad blocker on. I can never see my chat anymore. Is that someone your says, final rusty dead, memory? No. Someone said, if he's dead, who sent me the guillotine merch? Checkmate. Uh, a, uh, the AC Cest Atheists. Uh, that would be Brittany. Brittany sent you the merch. I just want to say... It could be know, anybody. Rusty was... Could be anybody. He it could have just gotten the, some... the titular trash rat. You know, maybe he just needs that. He needs those mortgage payments to keep going and keep by that merch. He's gonna, you know, he's got something set up. I don't know. Oh yeah, that actually reminds me, Kino Corner. I think one of the last times I spoke to Rusty, he actually gave me a message to share with you. Oh wow. Oh. Yeah. Um. I think he know, just texted me. He has my number. <laughs> well, I actually have it right here in my message. Let's see. Um, he says. Tell that rat bastard Kino Corner that I'll always forever hate him for as long as uh, my soul lasts in whatever state that may be. His, move, his opinions on movies are garbage, and he has no idea what he's talking about, and I curse the day I ever allowed him into my house. Well, he allowed me into his house a few times, so I guess he curses a few days. <laughs> wait, wait, there's more. To, there's a second block to the message here. Okay. Um the fact that that slimy weasel gets to have a career on YouTube while I sit here floundering trying to piece together the last scraps of my career gives me tremendous um what's it this is like a typo here. He must have been drunk or something. Uh fills me with tremendous dread, I think that's what he's saying, and no longer gives me the will to go on. You know, that oh wow! Like that sounds like a suicide note. <laughs> I was gonna say this sounds like something Emp wrote. No, that, that sounds like <laughs> Rusty is directly blaming Kino Corner for his upcoming suicide. Uh oh! Really? You think it's that complex? I don't know. I just like, he, he was me, very like, specific. Like and stuff. it wasn't even I'm gonna hate you until I die. Like it's he's already accepted death. He was very specific that his soul's existence will continue to hate Kino even beyond the grave. So it's like he knew he was going into another plane spiritually, and he wants Kino Corner to feel the brunt of the pain for it. Wow. Uh, should we do a like a a poll in the chat? Is Rusty suicide Kino Corner's fault? Yeah, you should do that. Should they should they have a, a choice between Kino and Cumby on who gets the blame? No, it, sh it should be between me and Emp, okay? Emp is the one being callous about his death. Hmm. What say you, Cumby, Eggy? Cumby's a, sweet, Cumby's a sweet boy. Well, I just want to chime in as a fellow alcohol enjoyer, just like Rusty. Um, as long as I've been getting blackout drunk, which is about nine years now, um, I've also <laughs> been sending random sporadic messages blaming other people for all my problems. So uh, no, as I was only listening me, to it... You, you, only, you only send me sweet messages, Eggy. Well, I did change it up a little bit because uh, I said, you know, that you got to balance it. You got to you can't be too homicidal because that's how you go. They call it the Kyle mode where you start punching your holes in your wall. You go boss man Jack and you're kicking holes through the door and stuff. <laughs> and I'm far too cheap to repair my walls or doors. 
So I did start bouncing at, it out with being a lot more positive as well. But at the same time, um, it's 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 a it's a viper. It's a king cobra, if you will. You got to kind of like wrangle it a little bit with your with your hands to like you know. But it deep down, as you're sitting in your uh, basement with uh, seventy pounds of spaghettios and all kinds of empty liquor bottles around you, as you smell and, and are dripping with sweat, uh, you do think to yourself while you're drinking, you, you might possibly consider. Um, how you ended up that way, and who wronged you, and how you're never going to forgive or forget their slights, or the fact that they've passed you in success while you've uh, just squandered in, in, in filth for years. It's just a, uh, you know, I'm just saying, I'm kind of spitballing here. It's rhetorical, <laughs> obviously, but um, I can just see where that might come from in a drunken state. Like, Rusty might have been mad at me, but... You know, he and I got along really well. Well, uh, let's see what we the poll has to say, because over 107 people have voted. And uh, 35% of the audience thinks that Emp Lemon is to blame for Rusty's oh. death. What? Uh, second place is... I cannot believe uh, with this. 27% is Kino Corner. You're, you're the second most to blame. Mm. And then I'm only in third with 22%, so I'm pretty innocent <laughs> here. I'm being blamed. I'd say, I, I'd for all say of this. that I'm innocent. I'm almost behind Emp, almost by double digits. Okay, Emp, he saw all the signs. Okay, Emp well, you know, right next to him, a major, a you know, majority, a majority of people don't think I. I did obviously it. moved to. I what obviously moved away from Florida. I went to Austin, Texas. You know, I and you don't think that Rusty that hurt Texas. him? Is that one of his friends moved to another state? I had no choice. I got a job in Austin. He had no choice. Yeah, he, he had to kill that. himself because he was so lonely. Like anybody can just say words, Kino. He had to have some thought behind them. You know, but what I want to bring up here is now that Rusty's gone, will we finally see the footage of you boxing Rusty at the 4th of July party? And Plemon, it's up to you. You have the footage. Well, it's on Rusty's computer. It's Pocky. been on Rusty's computer this whole time, and now no one can ever get to it. He told me he gave it to you on a flash drive like three fucking years yeah, ago. Yeah, well, because my fucking internet where I used to live was garbage, I need, I needed <laughs> to like store. It's a flash you need the internet drive. For a flash drive? No, I needed. You need the internet for a flash drive? Fucking idiot. Dude, it I was only needed, like 100 well, megabytes big. The, like, that's part of the reason I had to keep going over there and breathing his mold infested air from his AC ducts. I n All right, guys. Look, technology I have, I have a question is difficult. For, I needed to I go over there to store here. the video files. Who here? Who here has slept on Rusty Cage's beanbag turned bed? Remember, he had the beanbag that you took it out and it turned into a bed, and that was his guest bed. I don't know if you guys knew about that. And he had cots in the other room. Yeah, he made me it's sleep like on a military <laughs> cot for a week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You go to Rusty's house, and he's just like, "Yeah, I have a military cot for you to sleep on, or you can sleep on the beanbag." <laughs> well, for me personally, I use the fact that my height was greater and my weight was equivalent to all other people <laughs> inside the structure to uh, basically strong arm my way into sleeping on the couch instead. And it was a good couch. I sleep. I slept on a lot of couches. I probably spent at least half my life sleeping on couches. Well, yeah, Eggie, which it. couch is better to sleep on, my couch or Rusty's couch? Okay, well, but you got that, you got a real special couch. That's, uh, you know, you got that weighted blanket on there, which I have autism, so that really helps. But I sleep with Rusty, it every night. You had, a, you had a minimalist couch, and I will say for the minimalist design, it was very comfortable, and I would sleep on it any time, frankly. So he Looking beats here, me, the, wow. The poll, the poll well, I mean, if we want to, like, in. if we want to average right, it, but I would say complete. it's... Okay. Go ahead, Kino. Give me wins. The poll is complete. Implement at 39%. Mumkey at 23. Kino Corner at 22. Yeah, I think when we read the results before, that was fine. We don't need to hear the updated results. <laughs> well, yeah, what we're basically saying is that Emp is responsible. Yeah, that's what no, I'm trying to that's, say. This is, this is completely preposterous. How could any of these people who have been listening to what we've been having so far possibly blame me? Blame me when little Some weepy people, little shit sack BG Cumbie that comes in with the waterworks. You have the motive. The people. Meanwhile, I am stoic. I am stoic like a true Sigma male. And these little tiny beta dweebs in the Monkey Jones live chat right now, <laughs> they cannot comprehend it. 
They cannot but comprehend M, how a real remember man grieves his friend. The humiliation you felt from that that horrible video Rusty did where he's holding the newspaper impersonating you and he says he's severely autistic. Has that not been in the back of your mind for years and you bided your time waiting you know, for I, a I chance don't even, of revenge? I don't, even, I don't even know what you're talking about. I, I have oh. no idea what that video is you're talking about. I've never seen it. <laughs> I don't think anyone else has. The sad has. thing is you probably have not thought about it, and I've watched it like 50 times. <laughs> well, you know. Uh, it is on this go, channel. I, I think if you click on the shorts on this oh, channel. I, I just, I just want to bring up another rusty memory here. I just got reminded of it. Artsy in the chat says, Hey, Peyton, sorry that your hero Rusty is dead. I remember when Rusty was talking about Peyton. She used to like his tweets so fast that Rusty thought that Peyton was a bot. Yeah, he blocked her because she was liking all of his tweets, like, within one millisecond of them coming out. Yeah. Well, well I'm glad that Rusty at least got some attention on Twitter. Uh, I am now going to read through all these super chats so that nobody gets ripped off, and then, you know, if you guys want to hop off in the middle or stay for the end, I don't really care. You guys can do whatever, but... Uh, Ju said, "I'm gonna go say, watch Problem Child too." Okay, thank you, Kino, for joining us. Yeah, you know, I, I'm not gonna sit here and yeah, entertain these these losers any second who who voted me as the prime suspect <laughs> for Rusty's disappearance. What a load of absolute shit! Well, thank you for All coming right. as well, Amp. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was nice being here to at least talk about Rusty, despite the fact that uh, all these. Losers who didn't even know what he was like feel the need to <laughs> chime in on everything and everything about him. So goodbye, Monkey Live audience, and uh, fuck you. Peace, people. You ready, Aggie? That's right. Load them super chats up. Yes, sir. Okay. Can we say Rusty with a hard R? I think we all agreed. Yes, he can. Drake Dragsaw uh, keeps sending him wellness. No, I think he's. there's no need for wellness. Uh, um, I don't. I don't want to interrupt this. I did get a message from uh, some guy named uh, Tony Ravioli uh, in the midst of this, and he said, "Tell Cumbi I said hi." Well, it's a little too late hmm. for that, but Tony Ravioli says hi. That'll be it. All right, continue. Okay. Uh, Negus B Wilden says, "At least whatever Rusty became and Hero Four was a better reason than that cuck in front of the Israel Embassy." Well, that's absolutely true. Shubba says, Aggie, you and Rusty need to collab on an album. It'd be some true musical Kino magic, to be honest, YouTube. Well, speaking of things that were in progress and never finished, uh, yeah, I got the track somewhere. Uh, I mean, I could probably just figure out how to finalize it uh, with what I had. A but, posthumous you know, we... release. That'd be good. Rusty's final track can be an Aggie exclusive. That's true. Uh, Cletus says, rip Rusty Cage, pouring out the gourmet shit today, a six-pack of Bud Light toast. Now, Aggie, I, I believe we're not supposed to drink Bud uh, Light anymore, right? Uh, only Bud Light Platinum. Also, oh, right. for the, I mean, to be honest, it was always disgusting, but when nobody was buying it, see, this is what the GameStop protest should have been. Remember when we all bought GameStop to, like, try and stranglehold it? Everybody stopped buying Bud Light, and they were doing cases for, like, 99 cents a case. Mm. It's like, listen... I love drinking alcohol. Uh, nobody's going to see me drink this, uh, if, even if it's allegedly homosexual to drink it. If I drink <laughs> Listen, remember, uh, what, what was that back in the day? Uh, Zima? Remember that? In, like, in 1995, they had Zima. It was like the first wine cooler. It said only gay people drank oh, it. Oh, I remember that. If you're a real yeah. alcoholic, listen, you know what? I've literally, <laughs> I've literally licked white powder off of uh, like old desks before. <laughs> there is no rock bottom. Um, how, so, yeah, how does the powder help beer. you get uh, drunk? Oh, that, uh, that was an amphetamine, so that was different. Oh, okay. But... That's fair. Sunflare says, BG Cumbie, tell these people about the gospel of Jonathan Hills of the glorious word of Buddha. So if Cumbie wants to jump back in for that. <laughs> uh, Yannick, the YouTuber, says, Rusty sold me fentanyl in high school. I believe it. I mean, he was up to no good. He was stealing slushy, slushy machines. Yeah, I mean, he, 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 he was a, a felon from about, childhood. He made a lot of songs about dying. So, I mean, you know, hashtag death dealer. I don't know. I mean, if he's making all these songs <laughs> about how to end yourself, building numerous videos, I mean, fentanyl might not have been out of the question, but uh, at least everything that he sold me was always 
on the level. Mm. He was very mindful of all the substances I was buying from him at that time. But he was a suicidal, drug-dealing felon. Yes, that is correct. Uh, Soul M says, rip my nibba brusty. Rick Bain says, I remember when Rusty went to a slice a watermelon. He left the, li the live stream on by mistake. Great times. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of his favorite Rusty memories. <laughs> it's when he, he left the stream to, to cut a watermelon and forgot the stream was on. Classic. <laughs> Uh, yesterday at uh, 5.20 p.m., Aggie Rodriguez donated to say Dan Schneider equals certified sicko treehouse tubes. That's right. Wanted That's to get I that like again. Uh, Edgelord five numbers says Rip Rusty, the real supreme gentleman. Rip for $5 said Rusty died of his death. Deserve what got. Didn't collab. It suck. It piss. I okay. Peace out. Bye. Well, I mean, I think it might have been Ep Lemon right there. Uh, Lemon Genova in the house. Either way. Yeah, I think I think Emp was uh, saying a super chat by a proxy. I doubt proxy, Emp would ever uh, give me five dollars, though. That seems a little <laughs> rich for his blood. Martyr loser. Well, King. you know, he takes he takes he takes solace <laughs> in the fact knowing that you only get two fifty out of that. Well. Actually, the real truth is that it's, uh, you know, on Whopper Wednesday, he got $5 <laughs> off his impossible Whopper, so he had it spare. Wendy's has been doing, uh, maybe it's over now, but like March Madness, every Thursday, you can get a $1 Dave's single, $2 Dave's double. What a deal. I just got a free so you know cantina taco from uh, Taco Bell yesterday. I was driving back from the uh, casino, so I decided, yeah, let, you know, let me, let me drown my losses in this uh, taco. It was literally a tortilla. There was not even anything in it at all. It was, uh, and it would have cost dollars. So Taco Bell, please go out of business. I hate you. All right, continue. Well, you're talking shit, Kino, about Wendy's or what? No, I'm just saying that like you're a Midwesterner because you you eat at Wendy's all the time. Like I don't. It's not don't all the time. It's they're selling a Dave's Double for two bucks. You know, like I'm not going to say no to that deal, but. That's right. Usually it's like eight bucks. Fuck that. It's not worth eight bucks for a fucking sandwich. But anyway, uh, Martyr Loser King says, how are you going to profit off your friend's death like this? <laughs> hey, it, funerals aren't cheap, okay? Like, it, we That's can all true. pretend that we want to do the right thing, but you got to pay like 5,600 bucks for your funeral. You know, if we were all good-hearted people, we would do the service for free. But we're not. We're humans. Man's uh, got to buy some videos, though, be it. That's right. Uh, Exion says, get a Ouija board and contact Rusty at 3 a.m. Do you guys want to get back on here in, like, five hours? Uh, I'll you be asleep, a Ouija board? Then. I could probably get us a Ouija board. When you go to I Goodwill, there's, like, ten out. of them. Uh, I won't rule it out. You can let me know how you're feeling about that. <laughs> okay. And the second R says, what up, guys? When's the next mailbag episode coming? Hope you all are doing good. Well, the most recent video on the channel is a mailbag, so it'd probably be too soon to do one again, like right now. But new Medea video will be up soon, and you might see Kino Corner in there. Maybe, just maybe. Stay tuned. But maybe... Uh, I in like, if I come over in two weeks and there's uh, something to retrieve that maybe you could upload like two weeks from that, so it'd be like a month from now. Maybe that'd be yeah suitable. Yeah, we'll probably. When are you guys coming down April to visit me? Uh, oh, Solar Sands oh. has just entered the building. Oh my Darwin cameo <laughs> from Solar Sands. You're not in the shot. Kino, what is that shirt you're wearing? What is it says? What the fuck oh, is it? API? API is that right? Yeah, this is the uh, cease and desist letter that uh, my company got from YouTube. <laughs> Fascinating. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, so it's Kalen became a member of the Measly Few. Thank you. Uh, C. Keel says, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, YouTube. Danker Than Clanker says, Rip Rusty. By the way, how's Benjamin Stewart Steel doing? And Pod <laughs> Voisky says, buy my mixtape. Okay, thank you, everybody, for the super chats. We are going to wrap it up, so don't waste your money at this point. Shout out to my homeboy, C. Keels. That's my, uh, that's my homeboy right there, so 
Thank you for like, sharing, and subscribing. It's what Rusty wanted. And, you know, maybe if you'd done a little more of that, maybe you wouldn't be here today. But that's not my call. <laughs> he did make videos and songs about death for about the last 10 years. So, you know, can't Thank judge Thank you to uh, Yannick, the YouTuber, for the last minute. Don't know. He says he'll miss Simeon and Jimmy more than Rusty. Well, I'm, I'm not suicided yet. We still have a couple of years on that one, folks. I got to finish every Medea movie and every monkey movie. That's right. According to the average lifespan of an autistic alcoholic, I have at least three more probably suffering filled years in me as well. So, you know what? Let's keep on. Let's keep on go keeping on. Yes, sir. Uh, Keener, do you have anything you want to plug? Uh, did you miss the one? There was like one last super chat by Yannick, the YouTuber. That yeah, says, we got that one. Oh, oh, you got that one. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't paying attention. It's all um, good. No, I, I think I've said uh, I think I've said everything I've wanted to say. Okay. Someone, oh, someone says Yannick the YouTuber. You should be Yakub the YouTuber. That's right. Good suggestion. Aggie, do you want to plug the Rumble that you have retired from? <laughs> well, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure if I do because you know I already told people I said stop. You know. Cut off your five dollar a month subscriptions for my Rumble because then I might feel inclined to go back uh, too soon. Now I heard that there was some like uh, some Russian concert got blown up today. I said I don't want to come back unless there's really something tangible to talk about, which is why I said yes, of course. My good friend Rustaford Cage, otherwise known as Eric Wong, I want to make sure that I tap in and uh, pay my respects, uh, but I just don't feel like being contractually obligated to go live on websites anymore unless I have something tangible to speak on. So, no, I will not plug anything. <laughs> okay. Well, everybody, it's been a sad couple weeks in the wake of Rusty's death, but I think the real tragedy that night was Maestro losing at the Oscars. Look, somebody asked for an Izakino of this movie. I don't know if you guys can see it. Is but that it's, Son, uh, of Son of the Mask? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, we we asked. Somebody in the chat asked for we've all watched it. There's no review necessary. I mean, it's just it stands for Look, itself. All, all you gotta do is is follow Vin Love on Twitter, Handa and uh, you'll see is that right. Honda Bukia, and you'll know uh, all you want to know about some of the mask. You know, Kino Corner. You were asking when we're gonna come visit you. I think we should plan out some movies that we're going to binge watch you me and eggy and it should be i've not seen sallow yet and i have not seen son of the mask let's put both of those on the list okay yeah i have five sure mics so we can do a really nice podcast like a live ever. commentary during it or like a podcast after we could do a live commentary during but i don't think that that would work as well as doing a podcast after yeah you're we probably right you should put the live commentary behind a paywall, and then we'll do the review for the freebie. Whatever gets uh, more pennies squeezed out of these people, right? <laughs> <laughs> minimum, now, I would never paywall such hour. content. If you want to hear me talk about movies, it's always free. You just might have to wait for it to come out publicly, goddammit. Uh, Kyle <laughs> Peterson says, just joined. What lore did I miss? Eh, just Rusty killed himself. It's whatever. BG Cumbie started crying about it. We're we're past it. <laughs> oh, Robel is uh, going to start a flame war here. She's saying that some of the mask is better than Ren and Stimpy. Okay, at that point, I have to end the stream. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. All right, see you guys.